Let's face it, if you live in a first world country, odds are you've at least heard of the internet. As explained by Senator Ted Stevens, The internet is not something that you just dump something on, it's not a big truck, it's, it's a series of tubes. A metaphorical shortcoming for a massive network of data. Nowadays, there are a lot of things as first worlders rely on it entirely for, ranging from social media, to information, to illegal downloading. So, naturally, it is often regarded as an ugly, first world problem to gripe about one's browsing experience, be it due to a lack of privacy stabbing us in the back, or a lethargic wireless connection. But is there an explanation for this, past the mere weak signal? Is there anything beyond the front-end browser GUI that hinders our browsing experience, and should we put up with it? In this video, being one of the users in question myself, I hope to address that question of how things that happen on the internet without our consent negatively affect us and whether or not it should be okay. First, let's talk about advertisements. Yes, they're often very annoying, but perhaps there's something that can make us even angrier at them. According to website WP Sitecare, when somebody goes to visit your website and they make a request to your server right here, your server loads up a lot of assets like images and styles and those types of things. When you start adding ads to the equation, that's when things get a little more complex. Yes, you heard Mr. Ryan Sullivan right. Ads are loaded, just like everything you necessarily want to see on a page. But exactly how bad is this for us net surfers? Let's find out ourselves. Early in the school year, specifically December 11th of 2016, I decided to put this annoyance to the test on a website that I knew to have been sluggish in the past, Wikia. I opened up the Undertale Wikis page on the character Sans, and using Google Chrome's developer tools, accessible by pressing Ctrl Shift I on Chrome OS, I recorded the file size of every asset being loaded, from text to images to ads, and stopped when the tab spanner disappeared, indicating that the main page had stopped loading. Theoretically, the load time is what should be recorded, but this could easily be blown out of proportion by varying web traffic or speed of the server, so I chose to record the file content, which would ideally be proportionate to the accurate load time. Here's a screenshot of the results for proof, and here's the data of the displayed results copied to a spreadsheet, also as a link in the description. Because the file size can be skewed by decompression and offline caching, we are going to be looking at the file content instead. In this section is the desired content, anything under Wikia's domain that isn't ad or tracking related. Here we see image thumbnails, cascading style sheets, preview of anything trying elsewhere on Wikia, and other fascinating data. It all adds up to about 7 megabytes. And speaking of ads, there was certainly a fair amount of those confounded advertisements as well. These mostly came in the form of images and fancy embed layers. Their grand total was about 12 megabytes. So, what's the verdict from all this data? How much of a problem can waiting for ads be for a user? How unfortunate. If you're not mad enough already, to top it all off, you or whoever's providing your internet service is paying for these ads. Speaking in terms of scientific and technical innovation, just like anything you actually want to see, online ads are nothing more than digital data sent to you using electricity, which is of course a resource in real life. But even after all of that, never let it be said that ads solely exist to be a pain in the drain. Advertisers give the owners of the websites money to support their endeavors to get people to buy what they're selling. And where does that money go? The electric bill. Running a website isn't free, not even cheap, because somewhere in the world, a server is hosting all the digital files on the site, and it runs on, you guessed it, electricity. In short, ads keep the internet free, except for Wi-Fi and cellular data charges on the user's end. So, of course, the size of the ad file determines how much the user has to open their wall with reluctance. What to take from this notion is that those hosting the website should always take the time to keep track of what ads they are hosting, in order to give the user an adequate experience. After all, a huge interactive multimedia banner ad that runs on HTML5, JavaScript, or even the now obsolete Flash could certainly be as much a big hit for the consumers as a simple text-only or image-only ad, proving to be just as good for the website and the advertiser, and to save the user time and money. Our next topic is tracking. I'm sure that many of us have at least heard of the concern that hardly anything we do that touches the internet is kept absolutely private. The fear that social networks, advertisers, creators of our devices, or even our own government are taking full advantage of the simplicity of the digital-only world relative to that of the real world to watch us down or last keystroke. Some of us may think that only a tinfoil hat-clad conspiracy freak would say such a thing, but this is unfortunately not the case. You may delete your cookies and your browsing history, you may set your browser to send a do-not-track request, you may even use third-party tools. 
but according to Naked Security by Sophos, the treacherous trackers are very determined and have their ways of doing what they do, such as fingerprinting of the user's hardware and software, checking their IP address, and taking advantage of Adobe Flash local shared objects. But would entities such as advertisers or websites really stoop this low to learn all about us? Let's put it to the test. While the aforementioned tests run on advertisements were a bit difficult and required taking down a lot of information, and on a side note, crashed my computer a few times alongside all the other tabs I had open, using developer tools to found that you're being tracked is almost too easy. As just one example, the results of one of the previous tests on Wicked contained a URL containing not only my user agent string, my browser, operating system, system language, etc., but my entire browsing history of Wikia over the past week or so. If that's not enough tracking for you, YouTube constantly uploads your watch time of given videos to judge your interest for their dreadful recommendation system, and Amazon tracks what products you view in order to advertise similar items on other sites. In short, you are, in fact, being tracked, whether you like it or not. While advertisements that outweigh desired content are easily not something to stand for, the ethics of online tracking are very much a question of fairness and development. The variability of how much an instance of tracking interferes with the real-world information is the primary determining factor of whether or not it should be considered completely unfair, as different parts of the real world may have different laws about privacy. As a simple example, while the government spying on your device's geographical location in the United States is debatably illegal due to the Bill of Rights, websites such as YouTube and Google aren't infringing upon anyone's legal rights by recording trends, and can only have the beans spilled on their tracking, leaving them either to be abandoned by users for nicer alternatives or to change their policies for the sake of their publicity. In conclusion, it's no myth that users are sometimes weighed down by online commercial bulletins and that some goliaths of the digital world are leering at their browsing history. Of course, we seldom consent to it, and sometimes we aren't even aware of it and are still getting stabbed in the back by it. But whether or not a stop should be put to these problems is mostly reliant on their impact of our real-world lives, an overall question of globalization and sustainability. Good-sized digital ads can run up a dreadful telecommunication bill, but ads of some kind need to exist unless the website being visited is generously paid for entirely by heroic volunteers. Banking information, geographical location, and other personal data could be immorally, possibly even illegally, viewed by organizations such as the NSA. But the internet on its own is, ideally, a place of freedom, and the privacy of your browsing history on certain websites is not legal nor illegal, nor is anyone's access to it. Nonetheless, more severe concerns aside, these problems go against the purpose of the World Wide Web, the part of the internet that everyday folk use, but not the same thing as the internet, according to its creator, Tim Berners-Lee. When speaking to the New York Times, he said that the internet has become the, quote, world's largest surveillance network, end quote. He believes that the fact that a single entity, in this case advertisers and trackers, can have absolute control over even a single facet of the internet is a crime against humanity. All in all, entities such as websites, corporations, and governments need to know that viewing everyday net users as pawns in what they hope to achieve, such as getting them to buy things or judging their interests rather than individuals with feelings, is just a form of exploitation. Users should be able to know what is happening to them on the internet, and I certainly hope that this video has enlightened you about this. And thanks to this kind of awareness, this dehumanizing behavior won't be stood for when it causes bad publicity. But most importantly, Are you tired of working on academic assignments for hours? Well, fear no more. Introducing sing 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 That's what I get for working at Microsoft.